Good morning. Today we are at uh, Trinity Terrace Park Hospital in Bettendorf, Iowa. We'll be doing a uh, carotid stenting procedure utilizing the FiberNet distal embolic protection device. This gentleman had uh, a stroke back in 1996 and a TIA in uh, 2003, both involving some slurred speech and left arm weakness. He has uh, three-vessel coronary artery disease. He's had a series of uh, MIs over the past few years. Uh, he's had six-vessel coronary artery bypass grafting as well as uh, a number of stents put in uh, both his native coronary arteries and his saphenous vein graft. He has an ischemic cardiomyopathy with an ejection fraction of 30% and uh, ventricular tachycardia with an AICD placement. He also has COPD. He has heterogeneous placking in both carotid bulbs. His uh, carotid duplex uh, peak systolic velocity on the right side is 270. The left side is relatively unremarkable. There's bilateral antegrade vertebral artery flow. A CT angiogram that was performed demonstrating a relatively high-grade narrowing in the proximal right internal carotid artery. There's some post dilatation. The origin of the aorta, this is a type 1 aortic arch. The uh, proximal great vessels are relatively straight. Distal to the stenosis, there's a relatively long straight landing zone, which makes this uh, favorable for a uh, percutaneous revascularization. The uh, uh, internal carotid measures approximately 4.5 millimeters. The uh, common carotid measures approximately 6 millimeters. And you can see uh, the uh, lesion itself measures approximately 1 millimeter. So this is a demonstration of the FiberNet filter device. It's a very low profile system of uh, fibers. The wire itself is an outer uh, sleeve. There's a hypotube and then the center core. You can see there's a change in uh, diameter right between my fingers where the inner core is coming out through the hypotube. So this is going to be loaded into here until the wire is seen coming out of this back window. Then I'm going to close these down. You remove the locking device and you simply rotate the knob until the red button clicks into place. And as I rotate this knob, the filter is going to pop open. So this is the retrieval catheter, the aspiration catheter. You can see this is an introducer sleeve. The wire goes into the introducer sleeve. And as you push this in, the introducer sleeve will come out the back at the monorail sleeve. There is the aspiration catheter at the right up against the filter that's fully deployed. To retrieve it, you simply push in the red button and rotate the knob back and the filter will collapse. And then the filter gets pulled back into the device. This size filter is uh, approximately 2.4 French and crossing profile, so right out of the box it has a very low uh, profile, very easy to uh, uh, deploy. So that's on an 014 wire, standard coronary size wire. To prep this, you just dip it in some water, and that's really about it. It's ready to go. Uh, we're going to take our introducer and put a little shape on this. There's not much tortuosity here, so I'm going to leave this relatively straight without a big curve on it. We're going to introduce this into, this is a peel-away sheath. So I'm just going to advance this filter across the lesion here. So we're across the lesion. You can see the fiber net is advanced up there. So this is just going to turn until this locks in here. And on the film, on the cine film, you can see that the distal markers are going to come together. So as I turn this, they slide together, and that clicks, and now the filter is deployed. This is up near the petrous portion of the carotid, uh, which is a nice place to park the filters. So now I'm going to loosen this back up and remove that. We'll set that aside for retrieval. And that's all. It's ready to go. So now we're going to pre-dilate this with a 30 by 30 uh, uh, coronary balloon monorail. This is a uh, monorail filter. Position it right across the stenosis. So we'll go ahead and inflate. Let's go up to 10 atmospheres. Going up? Yep. Now we're going to bring the uh, stent up there. Again, this is a monorail stent. 
we're going to overlap this, have a nice overlap. Again, this is a very straight segment, so there's not any real issues with this. We're going to, I'm going to deploy this right here. So you'll see as I turn this handle, um, the stent will uh, be deployed. Now we'll take our balloon, um, post dilate this. So you can still see there's still a little bit of an hourglass shape in there. And we're just going to make one inflation. And if we put a stent across this and let it endothelialize, so I'll send you this as I position the balloon up there. Uh, go up to uh, eight. Come on up. eight. Okay, come on down. down eight. Good. Right. You can see the hourglass shape on that stent is nearly completely resolved. So I think that's fine. We'll go ahead and take this out. Very nice. So you can see that the, there's a little bit of an ulcer crater uh, that's trapped uh, behind that stent. Those are usually fill in over time. The stent looks very nicely expanded. Uh, I think it's in a good position. So we're going to go ahead and uh, retrieve our uh, filter. So now this is a monorail sleeve. Now we essentially have the aspiration catheter uh, loaded on the wire. So now what we're going to do is we're going to bring this right up uh, underneath the filter. Uh, there is a slight uh, curve on this catheter that allows you some directional support to get through more tortuous um, arteries. So here comes the uh, aspiration catheter through the stent, no problems. That distal marker right there is the distal end of the um, uh, filter. We're going to park that right there for now. I'm going to tighten up this tube just a little bit, but not over tighten it. Okay, and we're going to go ahead and make one aspiration here of about 20 cc's. So we're going to pull that back and just let that fill up. This is just to clear any debris that may be in the column uh, between the filter and the stent. Just filter this out and see if we got anything in there. So now we're going to take a clean syringe and hook this back up. Put it on negative, so start aspirating. And I'm going to take the filter down. Okay, you saw the radio opaque portion separate. Okay, so go ahead and stop there. Our filter is now back down. I'm going to take this off the vice grip. And we're going to retrieve this back into the filter here. So now our filter is back into the aspiration catheter, and I'm going to pull all this out. There we go. And we'll go ahead and filter out the blood in that chamber to see if there's anything in there. This is uh, debris that is uh, liberated during the stenting procedure. A lot of this is uh, pieces of cholesterol or um, other products uh, in the artery, uh, grunge, some clot, some fibrin stranding, platelets, things like that. I think you can see that the stent looks fully expanded. There's a small little ulcer crater that's trapped behind the stent. That will fill in. Um, that could have certainly been a source of embolization for him. Um, uh, but otherwise, I think that looks, uh, looks great. This is uh, an excellent example of a patient that has uh, high-risk features for traditional carotid endarterectomy that underwent a very... Uh, successful, uh, uh, uncomplicated uh, procedure. I think that the fiber net in general is an excellent uh, filter for these uh, uh, cases. Uh, the profile is uh, very low in crossing. Uh, the three-dimensional uh, fibers that fill up the artery will accommodate uh, tortuosities and uh, filter down to 40 microns. And so it's really uh, an ideal type uh, device for these uh, procedures.